Y254. Imagine. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News Updates. And tonight our topic is beautifully broken. And we are talking to Pauline Juma, who is a rape and gender-based violence survivor. And we're also talking to Emma Karitu, a counseling psychologist. Thank you very much, guys, for really finding time to come and uh, talk about this sensitive topic with us tonight. And starting with you, Pauline, uh, first of all, my apologies for all that ha for the ordeal that happened to you. But as I can see right now with a smile on your face, I can really call you a survivor. So would you share your story, a brief background on how the ordeal happened? I was only 16 years, mm -hmm. a very naive girl in Form 3, and I had a best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, she just had a baby when I was in uh, Form 1, and Form 1, and she was in Form 2. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I was just, I, w I was just growing bitterness in her because I was the one helping her in everything after the mother chased her. So mm -hmm. one day on October, uh, October 11th, mm -hmm. she decided to organize a... I, I don't know if what she wanted was a gang rape. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether she just organized for her brother to teach me a lesson. Mm -hmm. But yes, it happened. I was gang raped with one was the brother mm -hmm. and three other men that I don't even know where they came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a painful moment for me because I was just 16 and I was threatened not to speak out. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looking at these men one by one, uh, taking away my virginity, taking away my innocence, taking a, a shutting down all my dreams, mm -hmm. that was the worst moment of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after, after everything that happened, did you share with someone? Did you open up to your parents? Did you open up to a friend about what had happened to you uh, with the intentions of, of getting help? Uh, first, I would say they threatened me. Mm -hmm. They threatened me not to speak out. And I couldn't even share it to my parents mm -hmm. because I was trying to protect my parents. Mm -hmm. And another thing, uh, speaking out for people is not easy mm -hmm. because uh, the society that I was living to this date, mm -hmm. even when I speak out, mm -hmm. To some people, I am still a victim, and mm -hmm. they treat you as a victim. They mm -hmm. try to make you feel that it is your mistake. Mm -hmm. So speaking out for me at that time was not an option. Okay. I spoke out to my father, and I made sure my father couldn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. I just assure, I just uh, threatened my father that if you dare speak, mm -hmm. I am going to take my life away. Okay. So, uh, so for you, uh, I'm, I'm now going to bring Emma into this, whereby this is someone who has gone through a very, very, very ugly ordeal in their lives. And they can speak about it in someone and they can get help from people who are going to share the pain with them. But most people, most rape victims do not speak out. We're also talking about gender-based violence. Most, most victims do not speak out. So the issue is now, as a counseling psychologist, how do we motivate these people or how, what strategies do we put or how do we deal with these people to motivate people to always find the need to speak out regardless of the stigmatization, regardless of what is going to happen? How do we push these people to be able to share their stories with the intention of them getting help? Thank you so much, Patricia. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure to be here once more. Mm -hmm. And what my dear sister here experienced, mm -hmm. so sorry about that. It's a very traumatizing experience. Actually, it's post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. And for most victims, mm -hmm. they find it so difficult to talk about it. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm happy that she was able to do it because you have so many people living with, uh, with, with, with that because mm -hmm. they feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Some of the emotions that they, they go through, that they, they feel guilty, maybe I should have done something about it, mm -hmm. they start regretting. Mm -hmm. But the number one thing that I would want to tell people is that it is not you to blame. Mm -hmm. It is not you to blame, it was just an, a, an, an incident. Mm -hmm. But now people will start, peop, there's a lot of myths about rape. Mm -hmm. Some people will say it's because of the way you dress, okay. it is because of the, you know, the way you, 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 you present yourself. Mm -hmm. but. If you look at rape, most of it or gender-based violence, most of it is done by people who are very close to you. Mm -hmm. People that you trust, people that you don't expect to harm you. Mm -hmm. So that is why majority, a, lot, a higher percentage of the, of the victims are abused by very close people. Mm -hmm. So that is why I want to, uh, uh, to tell her that and every, anybody out there, if you are a victim, mm -hmm. number one, don't blame yourself. Mm -hmm. Number two, you need to seek help. Because okay. what happens when you, when you raped, you your mind sort of blocks and you can 
easily go into depression. Mm -hmm. If you don't go into depression, you can go into anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. which is not good for your health. Mm -hmm. So if you talk about it, you are, if you don't talk about it, you're blocking. Mm -hmm. and if you're blocking, you're not able to get help. So okay. that very important is to identify a person that you can trust. I mm -hmm. like the way she says that she trusted her father. Mm -hmm. So we need to know in our circle, in our family setup, mm -hmm. if there's somebody that I know, if I tell Patricia this, mm -hmm. she's going to die with it. Okay. And then of course now it is the role of the person you're, you're confiding in mm -hmm. to now talk to you that you need to get help. Because mm -hmm. you see, I don't know whether you've gone for counseling, mm -hmm. or you went for counseling, mm -hmm. because you need to get it out of your system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is important that even as much as you're getting somebody that you trust to talk to about, mm -hmm. it's also good to seek therapy because you can stay with it for so long. Mm -hmm. And like the way she's saying she was a virgin, that on, at only 16 years, number one, her brain is still developing. Yes. Number two, this is her, like a brother because it is a friend's yeah. brother. Mm -hmm. This is family. So, and then number three, she, she, she didn't expect that that would happen to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is a very traumatizing experience. And somebody needs to talk about it so that you, you get it out of your system. Mm -hmm. But it's also a loss. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is not this a, a, okay, we can have a session on loss and grief. Mm -hmm. But people think when it comes to loss, it's only loss through death. Mm -hmm. But now for, for victims of... Someone is taking away your innocence. You're taking away your innocence. Mm -hmm. you, f you feel like your damaged goods. Mm -hmm. You feel so unworthy, yeah? mm -hmm. so worthless. Mm -hmm. so hopeless so if you don't address it you can easily go into psycho into depression okay yes. uh pauline you've talked about that you shared you shared the story with your father most people after such an experience um their perception towards men is going to change their perception towards men is going to to be affected if i would ask why did you choose to go to your father and talk to him about it and not your mother uh I was raised a daddy's girl, mm -hmm. so I, from the time I was young, my mother is this tough woman, mm -hmm. you will never see her breaking, mm -hmm. but my father was this man, it was easily to see my father breaking, mm -hmm. and I knew very well if I tell my dad, mm -hmm. I just told him because I knew in one way or the other, mm -hmm. this man will, this girl would tell him, mm -hmm. Pauline did this and this and this, okay. and I knew very well at one point, mm -hmm. I was going to break down, mm -hmm. so I just told my father and I made sure he's mm -hmm. not telling anyone, mm -hmm. Because I just took the I took the medical reports, mm -hmm. packed very well in my bag, mm -hmm. and left for school. Okay. So the moment I told my father, it was after I was given a suspension mm -hmm. from school. Mm -hmm. That is when uh, I told my dad, "This and this is what happened to me, mm -hmm. and I don't want you to do anything about it, mm -hmm. because it is one month." Okay. already mm -hmm. no one is going to listen to me mm -hmm. i knew very well no one was going to listen to me because mm -hmm. even everyone at the school at that time had mm -hmm. their own perception of what is wrong with pauline mm -hmm. they didn't know what was wrong with pauline but everyone had their own perception mm -hmm. and uh, at that moment i just wanted it that way okay i just wanted people to believe what they wanted mm -hmm. i know what is wrong with me mm -hmm. i told my dad and that's all. Okay. Uh, having gone through such a moment, you've talked about being suspended from school. You've talked about a point came whereby you had to tell your father that if he revealed any information that you'd give him, you're going to take away your life. Did you at any point during all this time attempt suicide? I attempted suicide two times mm -hmm. when I was in school mm -hmm. during that moment, around from October to November, mm -hmm. or November 22nd, mm -hmm. that is when I was uh, suspended from school. Mm -hmm. I attempted suicide two times mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted to end it all. Being the firstborn of a family, mm -hmm. being in your community, everyone is looking at you and they're like, everyone, is, everyone had their own dreams for you. Mm -hmm. This girl will be an engineer, this mm -hmm. girl will be a journalist, mm -hmm. this is the next star mm -hmm. in our society. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you're breaking down, you're failing your exams. Mm -hmm. I just told myself, this is the end of it all. Mm -hmm. And I tried attempting suicide by hanging myself in the dormitory. Mm -hmm. And the second one, I, tr I tried to take a chemical from the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, the school the school was afraid. Okay, yeah. so how do we, because tonight we, tonight we are trying to talk about how, we fo how, how you were able to beat all these things. So how did you overcome the depression? How, what pushed you, what motivated you to say, to be like, it might have happened to me, but I think it's time now that I pushed myself. It is time that I, what gave you that strength to want to move on, to want to become better regardless of what had happened to you? Uh, something so funny up to this point, mm -hmm. I don't know what prevented me from committing suicide when I was 
16, 17, mm -hmm. because at the age of 19, I went through worst GBV, mm -hmm. and you see it's just three years. Mm -hmm. And through everything I have gone through, mm -hmm. I was picked up. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going through depression. Mm -hmm. It's now when I know whatever I was going through mm -hmm. was depression. Okay. But when I was young, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was stressed. I just knew things are happening in my life and mm -hmm. they are hard. Mm -hmm. But whatever keeps me moving, I think it's the hope that I've always had. Mm -hmm. And it's my mother, being that my mother is there and she's doing the worst kind of jobs for us to survive. Mm -hmm. I always look up to her when I was young, mm -hmm. until when I was 22, mm -hmm. when I started to, uh, when I told myself I am going to start a foundation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people up to this point, they don't know the reason why I started that foundation. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people saying uh, uh saying i want to start a foundation just to make money i mm -hmm. want to start a foundation maybe to maybe to use these girls but the reason the deep inside where i started that foundation because i want to raise a 16 year old pauline mm -hmm. i okay. want i want to raise i want to see in those children mm -hmm. what my life I, okay. could, I could want it to okay. be. Okay, we, we're going to talk more on the foundation, but now let me bring Emma. Uh, Emma now will be talking about, she's going to share a story about how she, she was, she had suicidal thoughts, but she did not, uh, she managed to not uh, commit suicide. But now there are people living around rape survivors, gender-based violence survivors, hot victims. How do now these people around us get to identify our problem mm -hmm. and know how to help us without attack, without dealing with it as a way that we f that the victim or the survivor is going to feel attacked. Okay, um, I like what Pauline did. Mm -hmm. That's a kudos for you. It's mm -hmm. good to be without hope. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, most people would be gone by now. Yes. But the fact that she could push herself, it's a compliment mm -hmm. on her side. Mm -hmm. So what happens with depression or other people who go through post post post-traumatic or a traumatic experience, mm -hmm. sexual uh, disorder being one of them, mm -hmm. they are those, they normally withdraw. Mm -hmm. So they, they are those symptoms of depression where somebody can withdraw. So what I can tell the society, mm -hmm. if, you look, if you know somebody, if I know Patricia is a very vibrant girl, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden there's something wrong with her. Like the way she's saying, no one in school understood what she was going through. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's important that we just, as uh, we work together to mm -hmm. spread the awareness so that people are aware if somebody goes through such an experience mm -hmm. what are the what are the likelihood likelihood to what are the likelihood uh, results mm -hmm. number one there's the psychological effects okay. which now we've talked about depression mm -hmm. she's talked about suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. then there's also anxiety mm -hmm. then there's also now withdrawal so mm -hmm. you withdraw from everything that you used to enjoy doing mm -hmm. so it's it's the responsibility of all of us mm -hmm. to watch out on each or watch out on each other. Mm -hmm. If I see Patricia has lost interest in things she used to enjoy doing, mm -hmm. if I see her sleeping a lot, victims they want to isolate. Mm -hmm. They withdraw, they want to be on their own, they do they lose their appetite, mm -hmm. they 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 don't want to associate, they dissociate a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody isolates themselves a lot and just want to be alone. Okay. They no longer are interested in whether it's school like at that tender age, I'm mm -hmm. so sorry, that was so terrible because that time you are so vulnerable mm -hmm. because you're a young girl, you're trying to get your yes. identity, mm -hmm. yeah, you're being gang ra raped. Mm -hmm. So it's a very traumatizing experience. So it is up to us to watch out on those symptoms. Mm -hmm. and, and then after that, we talk to the victims. Yeah, mm -hmm. We tell them, by the way, you don't have to feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the, one of the, what, what most of them do is self-blame. Yes. Maybe I should not have been there, maybe mm -hmm. it is me to blame, maybe I encouraged it. Mm -hmm. That is the number one reaction that they, they, they have, okay. self-blame. Mm -hmm. So now we need to talk to them out of that self-blame and say, you know what, it has happened. But now, how do we move forward? Mm -hmm. And now we start uh, like uh, telling them, you can actually be a champion. I'm a believer of nothing happens without a reason. Mm -hmm. Like now, maybe, I'm not saying that she was good, you went through it, <laughs> God forbid, <laughs> but maybe now you, you will not be helping those many girls mm -hmm. who are going through it. And it is not only girls. Mm -hmm. even, even boys, yeah, even boys, even boys, yeah. boys are raped. Mm -hmm. And most, if you look at it, it's mostly very close people. Mm -hmm. And even, and, the, and the what I can talk to, I want to talk now to the young mm -hmm. college, well, you can use a college, color. college school girls, mm -hmm. please. When you go uh, for those dates, mm -hmm. there's rape date. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have like three clients I'm working with right now on rape date. Because mm -hmm. you think this guy is my friend, mm -hmm. we've grown up together we're in the same class, but they tell you, let's go out, and then they put a drug on your drink. Mm -hmm. So what I would tell them also, don't take any drink. If you go to the washroom, 
leave that drink mm-hmm. or carry your drink to the washroom mm-hmm. because you will come back you dragged the next thing you find yourself naked yeah and something has happened to you mm-hmm. so some some ta- some people don't even know mm-hmm. but like i had a client who said uh, i just woke up in the morning and i saw condoms on the floor and i wondered what happened to me yeah so you have to be very cautious yeah and even young men mm-hmm. i'm not saying that it's, it's only that gbc is mo- it mostly affects women yes the gender based mm-hmm. violence. but, but even rape, boys yeah even boys go through the same mm-hmm. so we have to be very cautious yeah on, mm-hmm. on our environment on how we do stuff yeah? okay. so that you are you, you, you are, you're very cautious mm-hmm. and then your instincts god has given us instincts you can feel some danger coming mm-hmm. so when you, you listen to your instinct you can actually avoid it mm-hmm. but if you are not able to avoid it if it happens to you just be careful you, just be careful and seek for help mm-hmm. yeah. okay uh pauline when did you start speaking when did you start sharing your story i started sharing my story last year mm-hmm. and what n- what pushed you why what what is your intention as you as you put your story out there what intention do you have i believe a story is power mm-hmm. to me by speaking out mm-hmm. i just want to tell someone out there you can still come out of it mm-hmm. M- and most of the times i speak out through writings mm-hmm. and it's only a few people who really understand my writings mm-hmm. because even uh, last year the doctors told me I am going through depression mm-hmm. and I just told the doctors this is what I am going to do I am not going to take those depressants mm-hmm. I, I I know the source of my depression and mm-hmm. I am going to write it out mm-hmm. and every day I could wake up and just write a story about myself mm-hmm. through a poem mm-hmm. and uh, the moment I write that is how I could let go mm-hmm. because I was I was not brought up as a girl who just uh, trusted people so much around me mm-hmm. and the fact that it is two incidents your your situation 16 this happens you're 19 you're going through gbv mm-hmm. and then you're going back to a society that is cursing you mm-hmm. because i could walk almost 100 meters and what i could hear is just people calling me names mm-hmm. people just telling me how they're disappointed with me how i have let them down mm-hmm. how i'm not even i don't even feel ashamed i don't even take care take care of my mother mm-hmm. you see all these things i really made me just like our counselor said i really know how to seclude myself from mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. and uh, just writing it out and uh, having these two three friends that really trust in me and mm-hmm. they always read through the lines and call me okay. that is what has really kept me mm-hmm. okay Maybe just l- to add patricia what okay, she okay, does yeah, is very therapeutic mm-hmm. because one of the things that we encourage people to do right when you write you're releasing those emotions yeah. so in as much as she did she didn't see a counselor mm-hmm. that writing is on therapy. itself is mm-hmm. therapy mm-hmm. and then also there is the issue of uh, there's something that she has mentioned there's something that she has mentioned about uh, why is it skipping my mind about being okay when i remember i'll come back to it but that writing is very very therapeutic mm-hmm. yeah when okay. i remember the other point it just like okay skipped, yeah. uh, so now for you uh, pauline Having gone through gender-based violence, uh, you you were in an abusive relationship, and all these things happened to you at a very young age. Now I want us to talk about most people, most women or men, because men too, uh, we, we, we don't only talk about women being abused, we also have men who go through the same. Most people tend to stay in a relationship regardless of whatever that is going on through uh, what the, the regardless of what is happening there and still hope that one day things are gonna change for you what motivated you what what made you live when yeah. time came for you what made you live you know I was not just beaten one day and they decided to walk out mm-hmm. I was in an abusive marriage for I really let me call it relationship for around one year mm-hmm. because at when I was six months pregnant this man squeezed my stomach to a point I started bleeding I was six months pregnant mm-hmm. but I just went back I went to the hospital and went back to that house telling myself one day he's going to change mm-hmm. because this is what happens with abusive people mm-hmm. they don't really show you they're abusive mm-hmm. they will fast bring you close mm-hmm. make you comfortable to a point that you will lose everyone around you and then they know when I am going to beat you up you're not going to tell Pauline because you in your mind you think Pauline is against my marriage mm-hmm. and that is what happened to me mm-hmm. and so the day I decided to walk out it was after I have gone through much uh, through so much and my mother was my mother knew it all mm-hmm. but my mother would just look at me and tell me one day when you're tired of falling from the stairs mm-hmm. you will just come back and I am your mother I will accept you mm-hmm. a lot of times 
especially women. Women don't walk out of a, a, relation, a violent relationship because where will she go after that? Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, the society, you know, we have this mind that sometimes we just think of people so much and we forget about, about ourselves. Yourself, yeah. At that time, I was only 19, just a form four dropout. I didn't have any certificate. And I am telling myself, the same society that wanted me to be a journalist, mm -hmm. I am going back to the society with a child. Mm -hmm. And the society, at first, the society really judged me. Mm -hmm. I have been judged so bad with my society. Okay, so now Emma, how do we now make all these things? How now do we, because now it's about creating awareness to the society to make people understand that just because you're taught marriage must work, you yeah. don't have to stay for a marriage whereby you're risking everything of, about yourself. Just because you're told that you cannot speak about rape because people are going to label you and all those things. How do we push this message out there and make people be open and willing to help people when such things happen to them? Number one very important thing is that we need to understand yeah, mm -hmm. that a victim is not somebody that who expected it to happen to them. Mm -hmm. But what happens, the society really stigmatizes, yeah? especially in our African culture, we really stigmatize. But in the West, they'll talk about it mm -hmm. so openly. Mm -hmm. And then also in our culture, we, we, we are pro-marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a, an abusive relationship mm -hmm. and you're thinking, as she has said, people worry so much about the external factors. Mm -hmm. But may I tell people, don't worry about what people will say. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, people will talk during the day, mm -hmm. they will sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So whether you do good, or whether bad, you do bad, people they still, still talk. talk. Mm -hmm. And then your story will come and another story will come. Mm -hmm. So number one, your safety first. Mm -hmm. First I'm addressing the victims. Number one is your safety. Mm -hmm. If you feel this relationship is not good, for my safety, mm -hmm. it is important that you do something. I, I'm, I'm not like advocating divorce, mm -hmm. but I'm looking at your safety. Mm -hmm. Is it really safe for you? What are the consequences? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can get a, a sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. You can get HIV. Mm -hmm. You can get other. The, nowadays, there are so many like over a hundred types of mm -hmm. sexually transmitted diseases. You can lose your life, mm -hmm. and especially if you have children, mm -hmm. what happens to, to your children? Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking of the, the consequences, okay. so I always say because think of the consequences in, a, in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. What are the consequences of staying on in, in this kind of a relationship? Okay, I'm yeah. going to cut you short a little because time is not on our side and I really want Emma to give us just brief, just tell us about Eagles Modeling Foundation. Why did you come up with this foundation? Uh, Eagles Modeling Foundation, just like I first, I first said, mm -hmm. it was, it was a, a therapy for me mm -hmm. because I was introduced to modeling and modeling really assisted me by uh, throwing off uh, everything that really pushed me behind. Okay. Just walking on that runway made me lose everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, 2018 January, I approached my two friends mm -hmm. and told them, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to teach these girls uh, the skill, uh, modeling as skill mm -hmm. and through modeling I teach children how to speak out I teach children how to understand their rights mm -hmm. and uh, to me I just wanted to see a child when when we grow we have a lot of dreams mm -hmm. and a lot of times these children tell me I want to be a lawyer okay. what happens to us when we are 20 years mm -hmm. so our main our main dream is to just make these children dreams mm -hmm. come a reality okay. and that is why and the skill that we use is modeling just okay. walking cut walking and just throwing off everything and okay. just learning how to speak out okay thank you very much guys for really finding time to talk about it and Pauline thank you very much for sharing your story because I'm quite sure that through your story, there's someone out there who's going to be motivated to, to rise up, to dust off and feel that you might have given me a reason or you might have put me down for a day, but I can rise up again. So thank you very much, guys, for really uh, tuning in and listening to us tonight. That is what we had for you tonight. My name is Patricia Moriokin. Do have yourselves a very good night.